The need to seal windows and cracks in walls and floors has been around since antiquity. Lucky for us, we no longer have to stuff rags or smelly fish glue into these crevices. Today's caulking and drywall compounds form durable synthetic seals that also blend into the decor. This company's caulking comes in two types, latex and acrylic, both good for indoor and outdoor use. To make acrylic caulking, they blend water with chemicals that prevent mold and help the caulking withstand cold weather. Everything blends for about one minute. The batch goes into another mixer containing 700 kilos of synthetic resin. They add a plasticizer that keeps the caulking flexible over time. A combination of colorants tints the caulking, in this case, a shade of brown called sandalwood. After 15 minutes of blending, the caulking is ready. To test the batch, they cure a sample at 25 degrees Celsius for one week, then check its flexibility. If the batch gets the okay, it goes into this machine, which lines up plastic caulking tubes. Piston pumps lift four tubes at a time, and the nozzles fill each tube with 300 milliliters of caulking. The machine can fill up to 1,000 tubes per hour. The machine then seals the bottom end of the tubes with plastic covers. The top ends have closed nozzles with replaceable caps. Thanks to the resins and plasticizers, this company's products last up to 30 years. That's the tough side of caulking, but there's also a gentler, craftier side. Start by drawing a pattern on a piece of paper, then lay glass on top and run caulking along the pattern. After 48 hours, the caulking hardens into a delicate lattice. Then fill in the spaces with clear silicone for a frosted look. Use a small steel brush and rubber gloves to spread it and create texture. Perfect for a door or bathroom window. This factory also makes joint compound. You use this product to cover cracks, holes and seams in drywall. To make it, they mix 700 liters of water with chemicals that prevent mold and a type of clay that makes the compound more spreadable. Now for the main ingredient, 2,000 kilos of chalk. It's what remains on the wall when the compound dries. Next, they add mica, a mineral whose tiny plates slide over each other to make the compound flexible and help prevent cracking. They test the thickness with a device that gauges how much pressure it takes to stir the compound. Next, they take a sample from every batch and measure the pH level. It should have a reading of 8.8, .8, quite high because of the chalk. This is what's called a sandability test. Technicians first let a precise amount of compound harden on a piece of drywall. This machine then sands it down, applying 100 strokes in two minutes. Technicians then remeasure the combined weight of the compound and drywall, registering how much has been lost. Maximum weight loss should be 4%. If the batch passes the test, they feed it into this machine. It pumps compound into either small size 3 kilo or large size 7 kilo plastic buckets. Then, using a hydraulic press, a worker seals the containers with plastic covers. To open the bucket, you break a small plastic tab and lift off the cover. Joint compound also has its crafty uses. With a stencil, you can apply small amounts in intricate patterns to decorate a picture frame or mirror. Now that is some fancy filler.
Thank you.